So today on Project Shop, we have another little stack of uh, 500 MCM we're gonna strip. I got my helper here with me, and he thinks it's gonna be better to uh, run longer lengths. He actually told me he thinks we should run this whole length in one shot, and uh, I totally disagree with that, um, only because it's gonna be a hard time keeping up with that on the backside. So, what we're gonna do is stretch some of this out, maybe like 10, 15 foot sections, uh, which is about twice as long as what I normally would run. And then uh, we're gonna get it on the donut maker and see how it goes. Okay, before we get into uh, the rest of the video, I just wanna give an update on this hurricane we got going on. Um, I'm the blue dot and that thing is across the state and it's pretty, it's uh, battering it pretty bad over there, I guess. Um, and we might get the little tail whips that are coming up. It's supposed to be uh, between like 12 and 5. We're going to get a lot more wind and rain today. Uh, so we'll see. I'm going to clean up out here a little bit. Uh, make sure we don't have stuff flying around. Uh, I let, just like to say for all my West Coast um, subscribers and whatnot, I hope you guys are okay over there. Stay safe. And uh, we're just going to be out here having a hurricane scrap marathon party. <laughs> So uh, stay tuned for some updates on that. Now this is gonna be just a little bit less than uh, what we did yesterday, but uh, it's still a nice little chunk of wire. In my opinion, the best way to do this is to keep that machine running as fast as possible. Just keep feeding it. Um, with having easy cleanup on the backside, which is why cutting it in like six foot sections or less um, is easy because you can pull out a six foot section pretty easily and uh, either put it in a bin, put it in a donut. But if you can't keep up with this machine, if you don't have a box, like if I had a big box here that we could just feed it down into, it would probably be, uh, be okay running these long lengths. But I don't have a box or a way to really pick a box up and uh, load it in my truck or trailer. So I'm gonna get this out of this cart and uh, we're gonna wheel out some, uh, let's just say 15 foot sections or whatnot send a couple through and see how it goes okay so first thing we're gonna do is just dump this out on the floor and I know everybody I get a lot of comments um, of people saying I need to have some type of table or whatnot to get this stuff off the ground well I'm working on that I got something in the works that uh, is gonna help out with that but for now this is what we got going on here. So we're gonna pull this black one up. And this stuff I think was almost 500 pounds. So this is not easy stuff to be working with without a machine. Okay. set this over here so we can peel off some decent sized pieces let's see what we got here oh snap okay We're gonna try it. I don't think it's gonna go too well. Okay. And these little pieces here, we'll flip this back up. <clears throat> we'll use that wire to cinch everything up when we're done. Now, I had an issue with My bolt is, or the thread that this goes into is stripped. So, I'm gonna jack this up. Try to get that to thread in there a little bit. There we go. 
might be too much. But when you're running that big wire, you gotta jack these up a little bit. Or at least I like to, so it's not slamming into that blade so hard. I like to get this dialed in to where this thing hardly, hardly moves at all. But we'll see. Looking good. Let's see where we're at with that. Run a couple test pieces. Okay. So this needs to come down. Or actually, it's there. That needs to tighten up, I guess. Just drop down. And I'm bleeding. All right, look, this is how this works. Just so if anyone is ever wondering, that little thing goes up in there and then this just pushes up on it to push that. And uh, it's pretty simple. But now we don't have that adjustment no more. We're just gonna leave this off for now and uh, see if we can't get this dialed in to just strip this the way it is. Need more pressure on the back side, I guess. Oh, there it is. Uh, we're on the verge of cutting it now. Safety glasses on. These are already cut short. Okay. Now, we're just going to use my cable cutters people always ask me in the comments what kind of cutters I'm using these are Greenlee 706 cable cutters made in the USA these do really well on the 500 this is a Centora uh, rescue tool jaws of life with some type of Chinese um, double actin 10,000 psi two speed uh, hydraulic pump but we're just gonna use these for today. And, and what I'm gonna do is actually just cut like every other length because uh, I think that'll get us what we need. We'll see, maybe. I can already uh, tell uh, this is gonna be a, a, a deal. It's not gonna be easy as he thinks, or at least I think so. Cut a couple of those. Let's see what we got. Well, that's that size. Here's a long one. Yeah. Let me cut this. Let me cut this here. And right here. Uh, okay. This is a long one. I'm telling you, man, you're going to be fighting this. I don't think I will. Okay. Alright. We're going to cut this over here. <clears throat> okay this one is like six seven feet 
So this is about what I would be comfortable with. Okay. And this one here, way longer. I'm forever taking tape off the bottom of my shoes. Okay. Let's see what we got. Oh, that's a nice long one. Oh, that's already too much work, man. You got to put the longer ones in first. Yeah, exactly. Well, here's a couple longer ones coming. Boy, that's a long one here. <laughs> You like them like that? Yeah, but they could be longer. Longer than that? Yeah. <laughs> well, these ones are cut already. Okay. So I'm gonna run this and then I'm gonna run that, that other one in longer sections. wheel this all the way out for him. He wants long sections. Let's give him a real long one. All the way to the door almost. That's the issue there. What's that? That last one had a funny twist to it. It fucked me up right in the middle. It was damaged. All right, let's see if we can't wheel out some of this. Where's our nippers? Yeah, I need them. For what? Because I didn't get my, I gotta cut this one in half. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. You know about folding it up underneath itself? Well, it's just been unmanageable. Oh, it's unmanageable. You fold it up under like that. Okay. You shouldn't have to be cutting nothing on the back side. <laughs> Let's see where the end of this is. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, we got a nice chunk there. All right.
Just how you like it. <laughs> oh. Unmanageable. See that? That's why I do them short. Now, if I would have had all these pre-cut, he'd be in real trouble because I would have just sent the whole pile and it would have been a nightmare. So, we're gonna cut these a little, little shorter. Okay. Let's see where the other end is. Let's see what we got here. Go ahead and cut this. pre-cut everything with the jaw let's go ahead and make some cuts in here and then whatever else we're just gonna send it Whew. okay Hey man, I'm telling it's, it's hey dude, the, the deal is bro, the machine's gotta keep running, man. I can't stop and wait for you to do that. That's why I do in small pieces, because it doesn't matter if you can't keep up, you just keep pulling off the top. Okay, look what happened here. I done smashed my camera. Oh shit. Oh no. Okay, I thought we broke it. Maybe we did break it. No. Okay. All right. 
that well that's all of it now except for this now i'm going to start stripping this little stuff and then we can cinch up that donut it's getting there <laughs> I just don't think the longer pieces is the way to go, man. I'm, I'm talking about uh, no bigger than 20 footers. No bigger than 20 feet? 20 footer is perfect. I think maybe 10 foot. 20 feet is too much, man, because you can't keep up with the machine. All right, this here. Let me find my my dikes or some cutters of some sort now this wire here normally is a little bit big for these Ugh, yeah <clears throat> and i think this wire ah oh, this is going to be an issue so when you're stripping wire, I think I'm gonna have to use this hole that uses this. I have to jack this side up and that pin fell out. So now we got an issue. Um, yeah, and we got some issues going on here. And look at this, look how far over this is. These freaking things are so far over Give it a little love tap. Try to tighten this up. Look at this. This thing just never stays tight. It's a bad design. Let's see if we can't lock that down. Get this in here. See that? We want to raise that up just a little bit. And then I'm going to have to raise that backside for sure. And the fact that, oh, here's that adjustable wrench we were looking for for 10 minutes. Now I can't find my flathead that I had over here. Somewhere. Okay, just like clockwork, the GoPro got hot and shut itself off, but uh, here we are. We're back on this uh, smaller wire now, and I got the machine dialed right in to where it's stripping it real nice. What I had to do is, um, the little pin that I showed you that's up in here, I took my bolt cutters and I cut like an eighth inch off of it so I could run more threads because it looked like the threads on this were actually kind of worn out on the on the tip. And then I took the nut off that was the locking nut so I can actually run it up. You can see it's a little sitting up in there a little higher. So I got it in there enough to where I got it pushed up because what happens is if you're running these lines over here, and back in there it's hard to tell but i got a gap on there if you don't have that gap that wire will hit that and then just get bird nested up down in here and it's a freaking nightmare so to avoid that i always jack this side up now this is a bad design in my opinion uh, and there's something i want to do here to get rid of this gear because you can't jack this side up you know there there was a thing there a hole and a pin to push it up but why would you push that gear up then you're going to lose power to here and power to here and power to here and if you get that up so far and it starts chattering you're liable to break some teeth off so what i want to do is replace these gears with two sprockets like this run a chain back here and another chain up to it um so that it will do the same thing like here and just float up and down so uh, but for now we're back to stripping we got this thing dialed and uh we're going to run the rest of this wire so that we can uh cinch up our donut over here um now it's a handful playing with this long 500. <laughs> he's still fighting with it <laughs> all right back to work i'm gonna go ahead and uh run some of this in the longer lengths 
This ain't so bad. Um, I'll help him clean this up real quick. Hey man, you know what I'm thinking? If this thing was able to rotate, I know. and you could just feed it on there yeah. and it rotate on the inside like that, uh, those longer pieces wouldn't be so bad. No. But fighting them like this is uh, a nightmare. Uh, I've been there and done that. <laughs> but uh, a rotating donut maker, what do you guys think about that? If I can make something to have this just rotate with like a foot pedal and you can feed it in and they this just rotated as fast as that thing's pushing it out huh they already have them. what is it there's a tube dial coming through the mill the weld box that welds it and there's a blade that slices it off and you got to coil it as fast as the tube's running through the mill well we need to make one yeah so this guy steve here he actually uh worked in a machine shop and uh he's going to help me get my mill and my lathe up and running so we can actually build the parts and uh, actually make some cool stuff in here for you guys and show you some really cool things uh, and the rest of the stuff I want to put on engines. here. What's that? We're going to build some engines. And we're going to build some engines, yeah. Turbo motors. Turbo motors. We're going to soup up my Mercedes. <laughs> but for now, we're making donuts. And... Oh, uh, you probably could have coiled that up on the inside. Well, we're going to use that, some of that, to cinch this up. Wrap it around and then hit it with that screwdriver like we did last time. I've got one more big piece to get on there. I'm going to run the rest of this stuff. Okay, let's see if I can't finish this out before the GoPro gets hot and shuts off again. Oh, 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 oh. See what's happening here? This is why I needed an automatic cutter. I can't find my dikes. No, they don't work too good on this big wire. That's good for like the transformers and whatnot. I had a nice little set of miniature bolt cutters which work really good for this smaller wire. No, they were blue, I haven't seen them in a while. Um, they're like blue handled ones. We're gonna use this wire to cinch up the donut. Uh, 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 look what happened here. See, this is the problem. This is my nightmare. got sent in and because this thing is jogging back and forth uh, we're off the roller and it's stuck in there let's see if we can't get it going and let's see when this thing jams it's good to start it with no load all right see how we're uh, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower this side and raise this side just a little bit to kind of tilt that blade over a little bit and that might help us out oh yeah now we're almost in the center we're still off to one side and oh it pulled it through so i did get a lot of comments about having these like little funnels i plan on making a whole new piece not only having little funnels here but i'm going to have something out here that's gonna assist from that crap happening. And that right there, um, this happened when they pulled this wire out from whatever they had it in. Uh, it gets damaged a lot. And that's why I always say, never go more than 80% of the hole. We're pushing the limit here. But this one here, I could probably cut the front side, but I know for sure that back side won't cut this side wire. And uh, we really need to squeeze it to get it to open up so that it strips nice and clean and then we're running into this again uh -oh, is it gonna do it is it gonna do it it's pulling it through oh. is that cutting it are we am i am i cutting into the cable too much come up off of that a little bit 
This freaking fillet knife was super sharp when I first got it. I cut myself twice with it. Now we're still off. What's happening is this side's going up. It's peeling it though. So, I'll crank up on this side a little more. Put a little more tension on this side and release the tension here. So hopefully this side kicks up instead of that side. Maybe. You fighting it? Ah, uh, that's a little better. Uh, 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 is it gonna make it? Yeah. Yeah, see? You deal with this long stuff, and if it's not peeling at 100%, this is what you deal with. That's why, you know, stuff like this small spaghetti wire, I like to keep it around 10 feet or less because you could pull out with two quick uh, things, 10 feet. This, these are really long runs. I should be cutting them down some. I don't have my dikes. I don't know where they went. I'm losing my mind over here. You know, I guess it's all your preference and how you're doing it. Longer could be better, shorter could be better. If you're right on the backside collecting it immediately, Probably longer pieces. Definitely if you got two people on the backside, uh, longer pieces. This stuff is stripping pretty good. It's just coming, it's falling right off. It's just getting kind of wound up in there. And you can see I'm squeezing so hard on the backside, it's making it flat. We can actually come up off of that a little bit. Let's see if that helps out a little bit. But if you don't, if you don't squeeze it hard enough, then it really doesn't push it off. And then you're almost like this machine here where you gotta sit there and peel it. And we don't like that. We just like picking up clean copper over here. Let's see how we got this. Uh, we're dead center on that now. And it's feeling it pretty good. Uh, I'm running into this. Woo! <laughs> now when that happens, yeah, this wire got messed up when they uh, when they pulled it. And this is a nightmare trying to strip this stuff by hand. Um, for anyone that's tried to do that before. Keep doing it. Up, up. Is it gonna get it? Nope. That's definitely not good for that cutting blade. <laughs> oh no, we're off to one side. What happened? The whole thing moved over. Look at that. That vibration done kicked us over. came off. See? I lock these things down all the time. Look how off we are. Let me, let me get this set up. It doesn't matter. I tighten these things up. I put the lock nuts on and it just, it loosens up every time. Are we centered? No, we got to go over a little more. Yeah, I got to try to finish out the week and then I can come in here and dial in, spend some time building. 
Let's try to tighten that up. Ah, that's too big. I'd really love to try to weld some uh, nylock nuts on there. <sighs> See, that one in the middle just never stays tight. That's an odd size, like a, in between a 14 and a 15 millimeter or something like that. Okay, we're centered. Let's see if we can't finish this out. We ain't got much to go. Now, I can already tell this is gonna start causing problems. I really wish I knew where my wire cutters were. I need to take uh, and chain them right to this machine. Oh, there we go. going to keep happening over and over. Yep. Damn. Baby, come on. No, no, no. I actually have a blade, a hardened blade, and a nice piece of steel for the knife, the back of the knife, to make a shear. I have another Hurst shifter, or a different shifter, that's got a button on it, like a nitrous button, but it's gonna be for automatic shear so I can cut this and this stuff wouldn't happen. Yeah, this is a nightmare. We might try this other machine here. See if we have better luck with this other machine because that is getting annoying the only problem with this machine we're gonna have to oh oh it's cutting Oh, that's nice. What happened? Oh, no. Well, that actually did a pretty good job. But, now here's my issue with this machine. So many blades, you get this stuff going on where you can't just peel it from one side. It winds up going back and forth. You always have to break a little piece but it, I mean, it is coming off. Pretty much coming right off. I was squeezing harder over here, started cut. Ah, look, I got myself. It's like a hypodermic needle there. Well, that was better than all that squealing and wheeling. Let's see if we can't finish this out with this one. This one's bad. See all this? Look at all that. Some, some rough stuff here. Let's see. I wish I had a disconnect for this too. Maybe we can get this started and 
mm. peel it as it comes right off the machine see look what happens it like the wire must be twisting back and forth and it's getting on one blade back to the other back to the other and it makes these weird cuts and then you gotta like let's just turn it that much it's a very fine line between just stripping this let's see if i pull this really hard oh look at that nice that's what I'm talking about. You just gotta pull. Oh, see? Ah. What? Uh, we got the same issue. Hold on. Now, the only issue with this is I got no reverse. I can't back that out a little bit. <clears throat> Here, hold on. That was working good for a second. Let's see if I can't get that started again. I noticed the same thing with this machine. If I grab the insulation and pull it to the side, right as it comes out, it does a really good job of peeling it. All right, you ready? You hold that here. Oh. Yeah, you gotta do it tight. That's actually working pretty good. I mean, it's a little bit harder than the other machine, but it's still cutting, man. And that's the reason why I love, I still love that machine, even though it's not as fast or whatever as this one, it still gets the job done. And I can strip two 500s at once. And probably two of these at once. Oh, uh, oh, uh, oh. Uh. Let me get, let me get on that. I'm just gonna keep that tight. Uh -uh. Pull it tight, yeah. Uh. Oh no! Uh oh. Oh, oh, we got tape. We got all kinds of weirdness going on over here. Well, there you have it. There's our, uh, I believe, to be 500 pound donut. Uh, the amount of copper I picked up minus insulation. We, we, we're going to be right around 500 pounds. We'll, uh, I, I forgot to put the crane scale on it, but uh, we'll see what we got at the scrap yard. I mean, just by looking at it, it looks like a 500 pound tuna. You know, that 500 adds up quick. So uh, I'm going to get this loaded in the back of the truck and head down to Miami, sell it. I got uh, more copper to pick up down there, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to because right now, uh, we got the outskirts of a hurricane going on and uh, You know, it's kind of messing up my scrap game But uh, you know, even if I can't pick up more stuff We got plenty of stuff to do here in the shop and I got still got a whole trailer full of aluminum to deal with and Even if over the next couple days everything's kind of shut down It's gonna give me a great opportunity to get in here in the shop and just clean everything up and hopefully set these up so my friend steve that's been helping me the past couple days he's like uh really into what i got going on here and he's really interested in helping me rebuild my forklift uh the guy's like a, a old school diesel mechanic and an engine builder and i uh, used to work in a machine shop so uh he's right up my alley what i kind of need here in the shop because i don't really have to train him i can just show him hey this is what we're doing and he gets it you know what i'm saying it's not like i gotta sit here and train him so hopefully uh he's gonna be a really good addition to the shop and we can get a lot of shit done and finally get this place up and running uh like i was supposed to here in the beginning well this is what it looks like when you're trying to scrap in the middle of a hurricane <laughs> that's actually my copper from yesterday just gonna add to it oh!
Holy smoke. We got a whole lake. Look at that. Okay, we had 536 pounds, a couple pounds more than I thought we were gonna have on that uh, bright and shiny. And it held at 278 for 14.90 and eight cents, which I guess isn't bad for just, uh, you know, having one product. But while I was down there, um, I picked up this barrel of uh, transformers and um, most of this is ballast that I have to go through. And I also picked up this um barrel of wire a little bit of thick stuff but um you know there's a couple couple thick coils down in there but most of that's spaghetti wire and i picked up that barrel of transformers and uh a lot of that's ballast as well and we still have this from the um lighting job and that thing is stacked full of aluminum um i'm not going to even attempt to go to the scrap yard today we're just going to spend the rest of the day cleaning up in here because we made an absolute mess and uh, we still got a lot of scrap to get out of here. So hopefully today we'll blow through these transformers and that wire. And then that might be it. But possibly we'll start going through these ballast. I already started the first half of the video. Um, I have them up there. And the whole premise of that video is going to be which ones to mess with and which ones to not mess with. Obviously, anything that says electronic you don't want to mess with but i've been opening up some of these big heavy ones and um coming across ones that are aluminum and i've been saving the uh manufacturer and the number so that you know if you come across them don't mess with them and then i'm showing you which ones actually are worth messing with some of these big ones got big old chunks of copper in them and they're not that hard to get apart man I think I got one right here. Yeah, this three coil, all copper that I pulled out of one of them. And it took less than, you know, we can knock them out in less than a minute. So we got literally barrels of them around here somewhere. And uh, we're gonna try to recover that copper before the copper goes down any more than it already has. So if you come this far, thanks for watching. We have plenty more scrapping coming up here for our hurricane scrap marathon we got going on the wind's starting to pick up out here and uh i'm gonna get out here and clean some of this up and put a tarp on it and secure it so we don't uh, lose any of this stuff but um hey we're just gonna keep scrapping and uh, we'll give you some updates if it gets really bad i'll uh let you know what's going on out here <laughs> so like i said earlier for all my west coast people uh, I hope you guys are safe over there and, uh, you know, pray for the state of Florida right now. I'll tell you where we're going, right to the scrap yard. <laughs> 